Now this graph from our world in data is showing total confirmed COVID-19 deaths per region. So at the bottom there we see China, then we see the Asian region excluding China. And then we see there's been a lot of deaths in Europe, in that area there. And this data is going right up to the 4th of June. North America, we see quite a large proportion. South America, Oceania, which is relatively small, New Zealand, Australia, and uh, Pacific Islands. And then Africa at the top there, which is, is, is thankfully very small. Now, the case is where what, the question is, where is this going to go? Now, predictions are difficult to make, but I fear there's going to be increases in North America. And when we look at South America, there's no question in my mind at all, there's going to be quite a dramatic increase in that area. The big unknown is Africa. I have fears for Africa. But there are some signs of hope as well. So the Africa is kind of the big unknown on that graph, really. Now, this was sent in by Phil in Auckland in New Zealand. And what they've done here is um, because people were having difficulty. Well, this is already a wide uh, pavement or sidewalk here. But they made it even wider by fencing off part of the road so that pedestrians could walk on the road and have even greater social distancing. So that's one of the strategies in New Zealand that's prevented the spread. And of course, we, knew, we know that New Zealand is a dramatic success story. It's virtually eradicated COVID-19 virus. So that social distancing there has certainly helped. Now, this is a picture from uh, Jen uh, Borrow in, uh, Jennifer Borrow in uh, San Francisco. And let's just say it's not demonstrating very good social distancing. So, welcome. <laughs> it's uh, Friday the 5th of June. Now, there's some interesting news to, uh, to share with you today on a range of fronts. So, so let, let's start with some general news first of all, and then we'll look at some countries in more detail after that. So to start off with, um, the study that we reported in detail a few days ago, last week I think it was now in The Lancet, this study here, hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine with or without a macrolide for the treatment of COVID-19, a multi-regional registry analysis. Now this looked like an all singing or dancing study. But yesterday we reported there was an expression of concern over the data, serious scientific questions about the validity of the data. And the lead author, uh, Professor Mandeep Mihera, and the three other authors um, have asked for retraction of this paper. Now, this is just stunning. It's just, it's just staggering that, that uh, a paper of this magnitude, of this international magnitude that collected data from, was it 60 odd countries? I can't remember thousands of participants and now there's a question mark over the data it just it, it just beggars a belief and uh, I did a full report on this it was published in the Lancet it looked like a good international study and it's been withdrawn Richard Horner the the editor of the Lancet uh, reportedly in the Guardian has said uh, this is a shocking example of research misconduct in the middle of a global health emergency. Now that's what, that's what the Guardian says that Richard said. So I've no reason to question the Guardian on that. But th these are the references here. Obviously I'll post the full notes and references um, for your convenience in, in, the, in the description below. So after this debacle, whatever you want to call it, what do we know? Is hydroxychloroquine effective or not? Well, this, this, this data doesn't tell us. We're no further forward. 
it's just an unbelievable uh, situation and uh that they're the re I'll give you some more that that their retraction references if you click on those it will take you straight to the um to the retraction pages of, of the of the lancet now to confuse the issue yesterday i reported on this we did a full report of this yesterday a randomized trial of hydroxychloroquine as post exposure prophylaxis now let's be clear it's only this study this study that's been withdrawn that one not this one so the findings of this are likely to still be valid that we looked at yesterday and do go back and look at that in detail does that mean it was a perfect study no of course not there's no such well <laughs> there's all you can always critique studies to some degree um but that's certainly not retracted and, and the data from that while it can be questioned while it can be discussed uh, is, is there yesterday for you to, to look at and of course go to the reference and, and review it for yourself so I think that's all we'll say about that um, so disappointed is a word that comes to mind now this is not disappointing this next bit is alarming now there's been I don't know the full details on this but there's been disruption of existing vaccination campaigns as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and I've heard accurate reports that there's outbreaks of measles in Cambodia, Nepal and I believe Ethiopia and I'm also worried about outbreaks of cholera, uh, diphtheria and uh, yeah they're, they're the main ones or oh, polio, polio uh, is, is still present in parts of the world as well the, these terrible uh, infectious diseases and, and certainly measles and uh, diphtheria seem to be rearing their ugly heads again and their heads are indeed ugly so I'm just going to give you a, a little bit of a uh, background about measles because th this has got the potential to kill many many more children than COVID-19 for sure and potentially more people altogether than COVID-19 so, so measles, um, we, we don't often think about it so much these days because we're vaccinated in this country. We have the MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. But measles is still a problem in, in many areas where vaccination uptake is poor. So it's, it's highly contagious. It's serious and it's a viral illness. So measles is a big problem. Now, in 1963 before probably most of you were born um, in 1963 there was a, a major rollout of the vaccination with the World Health Organization the United Nations and uh, a lot of the children in the world started to be covered for measles in 1963 now be, be, this is what we forget before this infectious disease was such an ongoing problem and killed millions of people and it's just the vaccination programs that have kept this at bay. So before 1963, according to the World Health Organization, which you can check there, the reference for yourself, major epidemics every two to three years, an estimated 2.6 million deaths each year. 2.6 million deaths each year from measles prior to 1963, mostly children. And even in 2018, despite the readily available vaccine, the readily available and effective vaccine, the World Health Organization estimated that 140 people died from measles in 2018. And the tragedy is that most of these were children under the age of five. Because adults have mostly been exposed to measles or, or had the vaccine and um, less likely to to succumb to the infection so we're talking about a disease that killed tens of thousands of children in 2018 tens of thousands this is a major risk and indeed a major indictment on humanity that it's hard to believe 140,000 children died from measles because they weren't vaccinated virtually all of those could have been prevented with vaccination programs Mostly children under the age of five. 
Now, the measles virus passes through uh, direct contact and through the air, much the same as COVID-19 does, but measles is much more infectious. Measles is one of the most infectious diseases, probably the most infectious disease I know of personally. Um, it's a very infectious disease. It infects the respiratory tract, then spreads through the body, just as uh, COVID-19 uh, does. And indeed, the symptoms can be similar. There can be respiratory features, um, nasal features, uh, high fever. The difference is in measles, you develop a rash normally after a few days, which you don't seem to get in COVID-19. At least it's not reported in COVID-19. Um, so 2000 and two, the year 2000 to the year 2018, the World Health Organization estimate that... Um, 23 million deaths were prevented as a result of measles vaccination. Do you see why I'm so concerned about measles vaccination campaigns being disrupted? We don't want to go back to the bad old days of mass infant fatality from measles. And glo global, globally, measles deaths have decreased by 73%. So in the year 2000, it's estimated that over half a million children just think about it, half a million children a year dying from measles, down to the much lower figure, but still completely appalling figure of 142,000 in 2018. And now measles campaigns have been disrupted. We are starting to see outbreaks of measles in Cambodia, Nepal, and I think Ethiopia. And this is remarkably concerning. We need to get these vaccination programs going again. So there's no question in my mind that disruption to v measles vaccination has the potential to kill tens of thousands of the world's children. Way, way more children can die, could die from this than would ever die from COVID-19, which thankfully largely spares children from severe disease, largely not entirely. But measles certainly doesn't. It targets children and it goes for them and it's a dangerous disease with a high fatality so that is i'm actually more concerned about this than i am about the covid19 pandemic at the moment to tell you the truth especially because it's affecting the potential for tens of thousands of children to die around the world and um i really hope governments act on on this 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 alarm i'm giving out now and I raised concerns about the COVID-19 back in January, February. Now I'm raising concerns about measles. Let's hope these concerns, not just me, it's international experts around the world who actually know much more about this than I do are concerned about this. But at the moment, that doesn't seem to be filtering through to effective vaccination of children with measles vaccine. Now, the vaccine for the COVID-19, just a quick review here. Uh, there's a global vaccine summit led by uh, Boris Johnson, our prime minister in the UK yesterday, and various pledges and things were made. Now, there's 10 trial, there's 10 vaccines in human trials at the moment. So these are at a more advanced stage, 10, 10 trials. There's about 100 groups working on vaccines around the world, serious contenders. But there's 10 in human trials uh, at the moment at a fairly advanced stage. The Oxford group's at a fairly advanced stage and AstraZeneca, who partner with the Oxford group, say they can make two billion doses quite quickly. That would be good, wouldn't it? Two billion doses. So that's one possibility. Now, I'm not going to highlight all the vaccine programmes around the world, but the other one that's looking promising is the uh, the Moderna one uh, in the United States. I can't, can't remember where this was, somewhere in the United States. Um, now, they're on phase two clinical trials again, which is volunteers. And, and they're looking at safety, uh, reactogenicity and immunogenicity. Now, reactogenicity is, are there any, do, does this, genicity is beginning. So does this cause adverse reactions? So obviously when you get a vaccine, you often get a sore arm, for example, but are there any more serious <clears throat> adverse reactions? In other words, they're testing for its safety. So safety, reactogenicity and immunogenicity, how much is it working? So that's being tested at the moment. It's looking good so far. Phase one trials showed new phase one trials are on small numbers of people after animal trials showed neutralizing antibody teeters at or above the convalescent sera. Now we looked at this at the time. What this means is the people that they vaccinated had 
as many or more antibodies in their blood that can neutralise the COVID-19 virus as were generated by people who'd actually had the disease. So it looks like this vaccine was giving a degree of immunity equal to someone who'd had the disease, so it was promising. And the phase three trials start in July. So um, phase three would be a much larger scale clinical trial starting in July. So this is promising, and let's be clear, this is unprecedented in how quickly these vaccines have been developed. Now, I've gone on a bit longer than I intended there, so I think I'll just leave that video there, then we'll come back and we'll do a different, we'll do an international roundup as a separate uh, video.